Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another preview. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe. Do not be like one of our forwards. Hit that like button. <laughs> it's another London derby, unfortunately. Three more weeks left until the end of the season. For anybody who still believes that we have hope in Europe, fair play to you guys. I have officially checked out. But even then, you can't really check out too much when it's Chelsea versus Tottenham because this is a sore fixture where form goes out the window. And I, I think I think for both of us, we need form to go out the window. <laughs> but before we get into it all, I need to shout out Ben. Big up. Shout yes, out bro. to We Are Tottenham TV as well. Link is in the title. Link is in the description. Everybody sub and head over there right now. Thank you, bro. How are you feeling going into this game? Because like we said, both teams aren't going into this game on good form. Yeah, I mean, I, in my opinion, I, I think our season is dead. I mean, a few fans, my brother being included, are still clinging on to that hope that we can get top four. But I'm looking at it being like, I think it's been dead since that game against Newcastle where we got absolutely tonked 4-0. And on the back of a North London derby defeat under the circumstances that we lost, I mean, Michael Oliver basically should have an Arsenal shirt on under his referee jersey because I thought I've never seen so many bad decisions in one game before it actually wound me up so much and on the back of that it's just put me on tilt and coming to Stamford Bridge it's not the best place you want to go after two really bad defeats like that so I'm not coming into it in the best of mentality but I'm looking at what Chelsea have done this season and it's probably one of our best chances to win at Stamford Bridge so there's a bit of hope about me but then it's always the curse at Stamford Bridge. I think we've won there like once in the whole Premier League era. And, you know, I think we did some content around that game as well. I think we were eyeing each other up during the game. I think mm. I saw you in the stand. So, I mean, that was the last probably good game that we've had at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, I, I remember that one. Really bad memories. But in terms of this one, how, how do you feel into this? Because I'm going into this game with a bit of cautious optimism. And my optimism is only like two things. Number one, Chelsea always seem to wake up when it's Tottenham. Mm. But I don't really feel like this is Chelsea anymore because like, we don't really have the same influence in the team. And also, you guys don't like coming to the bridge. But with the same breath, like everything about Chelsea just seems to be completely different this season. And like we, I feel like we're the bottle jobs going into this game <laughs> and not you guys. So how's your thoughts going into this game? Yeah, look, I think... It's complete. It's, it's, I think we're going into the complete unknown because if you look back to the game that we had in the, at the lane, right, you beat us 4-1, but I thought we were the better team on the day. And I think if we didn't get those nine men, those two men sent off, I think we would have comfortably won that game. I really do believe that. I think for the when it was 11-on-11, 11 11, I think we were absolutely smashing you off the park. Well, I think like that 5-0 against Arsenal, if you guys didn't go down to nine men, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you got that second offside goal, like, we're going to hold six today, aren't we? And then that, that could have happened. That could have happened if we didn't get the real. We lost our heads. We lost our way. You took advantage of the crazy high line we had at nine men. But that's uh, what worries me because you guys are going to come into this game angry. You got embarrassed by a team that has no consistency in its game. Yeah. And you guys are going to want revenge. We need revenge. We have to come into this with that kind of mentality where we want revenge against Chelsea. But like you said, Spurs never turn up at Stamford Bridge. Like I remember one time, that one game in my lifetime that we turned up at Stamford Bridge. But having said that, it's completely new. Everything's new. Ange is new. New team. Harry Kane's gone. You know, it's a whole completely new, fresh idea. Chelsea as well, completely new. So I I've just got visions in my head. I've just got visions that we go 2-0 up and the away fans, I'll be there singing Maurizio Pochettino you know his magic and 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 it all end in a disney fairy tale land like that but it's never disney fairy tale when spurs go to stanford bridge that's the reality of it and i think both teams are probably just want the season to be gone by now and look there is an opportunity for us there is a real opportunity for us this week to finally win again at stanford bridge but i just question it um with our Midfield players, no one's playing well at the moment. It's so easy to just Even play Madison's one ball. fallen off a bit for you. Yeah, Madison's fallen off. Basuma's fallen off. I can't tell you one midfielder that is actually playing consistently game after game well at the moment. I'm happy with the defence, apart from Destiny Adoggi's going to be out. So that's some way you can clearly target. And if Cole Palmer's going to drift off to the right and get in one-on-one -on -one situations with, let's say, a Ben Davis, that is clearly areas that you can target if you can get in those. But Palmer's probably going to play more centrally. So... Actually, I'll be Madueke against him, if anything. Even Madueke. Madueke is good at one-on-ones. He can, he can definitely burn He's, Ben Davis. He'll just keep asking questions, keep yeah. driving at him. So that's definitely areas where you can attack us and be uh, successful against us. But I look the other way. Um, and yeah, our attackers aren't playing well. But we've got Hyung min Son. And on any given day, Hyung min Son 
can beat the best defences in the world. We saw it. He went to the Emirates earlier this season, scored two goals himself. And one of the goals, it was really in tight space in between Saliba and Gabriel and got um, his shot off and hit That's the back That's what Madsen done Saka, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That same goal. So I think if we have these players that can turn up on a London derby, on a one-off game, like a Madison, like a Son, like a Brennan Johnson, who's been improving throughout the season. Look, I do think there's possibilities for us to win this game, but I just never have confidence going to Stamford Bridge. I understand it because f- f- taking my biased head off and everything, I think it's two teams coming into this game with very similar matchups in terms of the fact that we're not in good form. Both our attackers aren't necessarily doing well right now. Defensively, we can both get got at. Our set pieces is just going to be who can be worse. Hmm. We both don't really have good 90 minutes within us. Like, I think from a neutral perspective, this game is going to absolutely slap it. It's going to be terror. It's going to be awful for both of us. It's going to be one of those games where probably we both don't turn up and there's just going to be loads of goals and it'll be like a bit of a mid-off. You know what I mean? Like... Chelsea probably don't want to play Spurs right now. Spurs don't want to play Chelsea right now. It's just one of these games like you probably just want to get it over and done with uh, from any particular set of Bro, fans. We've got two so. London derbies this week. After you lot, it's West Ham. Oh, West Ham. And that's another one that could do their first double over us in God knows how. Actually, no. They did one against us in 2020. They, they really are our bogey team. But CBA. It's just like the mentality. I was so depressed after that North London derby, and I'm still feeling it now, to be fair. I really am, because I don't even... Th- I don't know if you watched the game, but I don't even think Spurs played that badly. I really just don't. just got caught out in moments and set pieces. Two set cool. pieces. Arsenal and their bloody set pieces. Glorified Sam Allardyce, Mikel Arteta. I'm telling you, with their, like, 16 set pieces this year, one of them, Hoybier, puts it in the back of our own net. The other one, um, Kai Havertz, just jumps higher that, that, than that's anyone. That's the thing. They just took advantage of two teams that suck at set pieces like with us they scored one and and it was a short corner that led to a goal they tried that about three times before scoring and i'm like can someone go to the first man Instead of just leaving him isolated. Nope, 2 0. You just let Ben but White get a goal. This is on exactly my head. what happened to us at Newcastle, though. Like, we scored, we conceded a corner right at the end uh, when Shah heads it in. But we had about five warning signs before that from corners where we do this stupid zonal marking thing where no one picking up anyone. Just, you know what zonal marking is about. Yeah, we it's do the same thing. It's terrible. What is zonal marking about? It is literally the worst tactic from defending a set piece. And they could have scored about four or five corners before they actually got one. And we had warning sign after warning warning sign after warning sign and it's not just that game it's happened all season at least with us I know we don't have a set piece coach because our manager is like you don't need set co- set piece coaches the individuals can do it themselves well done we've, we've nicked Brentford's now so next season should be a little bit better because Brentford are actually pretty good at set pieces but for now <laughs> uh, I hope Silver starts because it's our only real threat that's about it that's about it and it's all just going to come down to moments of magic from Cole Palmer or individuals and that's going to be the only way we get something from this game yeah I feel like uh, if Thiago Silva starts he is on 100% scoring from a corner 100% I mean he's our only threat from corners he's got like three from there but we've got We've got Mickey van der Ven and Kutu Romero at centre-back, right? And I love them both. But the thing is, van der Ven, as much as I love him, for someone so big, he's actually quite poor in the air. And I don't understand why that is. Six foot four, unbelievable pace. His recovery runs are unbelievable. Like, you saw at Arsenal in the second half, the amount of times Martinelli was bearing through on goal. And he's not slow. And van der Ven was just burning him and just taking the ball off him every single time. So... From general gameplay, I think he's a top, top centre-back. But when it comes to defending set pieces and aerial ability, I don't know what it is, but we've just got no one on our team that's good at aerials. I think it all comes down to coaching to a certain point because players got to know what their role is, who they're marking. They should be watching a bunch of set pieces before, but I just don't believe we do that. And maybe that's the case for you guys, but... Actually, I, I don't even know if you guys have a set piece. We call. don't. We don't. And then Andrew's been asked problem. about it so many times. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, we don't need one. We don't need one. We've got Mile Yedinak, first role in coaching ever, doing his set piece coaching. Yeah, that's that's where we've both suffered then. That's mm. it. Because we had one under Tuchel. I think it was Anthony Barry. I don't know if he followed him to Bayern or if he went to an international role, but he left and we've just fell off a cliff ever since. You just got to look at Arsenal, right? And the set piece coach that they've implemented. He must be the best set piece coach in the world or something. Because and they've the way... got a bunch of tall physical players. But the way he's got them set up from set pieces is just incredible. Like, I was watching their corners against us and, like, 
they had about five or six men just bunched up in one area and the Spurs players were just zonal marking nobody in the middle of the box. And then as soon as the corner's taken, they just rush in and they just catch everyone by surprise. But they shouldn't catch everyone by surprise because you should be watching that before. You should know they're, what they're about to do. And they do nothing to combat it. This is what happens when you ignore specialists because specialists are specialists for a reason. And that is the difference maker within teams. We won a UCL with a, with a set-piece coach. Now we haven't got one. That's only one of the reasons why we fell off. But, yeah, oh, I'm not looking forward to this one. How far are you guys off top four? Um, at the moment, we're seven points with how many games in hand? We have two games in hand. Seven points off, two games in hand. Okay, so a win for you guys could really raise more confidence. But, like, you guys have to go there and break another duck. Even the most optimist of Spurs fans, my brother, says that if we beat Chelsea, it's still on. If we lose, it's dead. Yeah, you, so. we both can't afford to drop more points. That's why like this is going to be a really good game from a neutral perspective. But I'm going 2-2 because mm. I think like we'll take the lead. We, we love starting games well and just completely bottling it. And I think you guys will come into the second half a lot stronger. I don't even know if we have it in us to make good subs i don't know if you saw our bench against villa literally the worst bench <laughs> i have ever seen in my life we had two goalkeepers one of them was playing for hashtag united earlier this season no. and serious yeah, hashtag united <laughs> gilchrist de Sassi and just nobodies nobodies big up to all the academy players on the bench hope you enjoyed the experience but who am i turning to so like you guys will probably be much better in the second half probably get a goal I see 2-2, two, two, same as last season. Yeah, Timo Werner's actually uh, injured for this game. He pulled up a hamstring against Arsenal. I completely forgot about that in our preview, but... No Werner goal. <laughs> no Werner. So I think it'll be Son on the left, Richarlison up top, and probably Brendan Johnson or Kulisevsky. Uh, if it's up to me, I'm actually dropping Madison for this game and playing Kulisevsky in the number 10. Yes. Um, so I want to see Son on the left, Richarlison up top, and Brendan Johnson on the right. And I think all of them have had a good season to be fair Richarlison every time he stepped in I think he's done well he went on that big streak scored 10 goals this season uh, Sonny is Sonny um, probably the only world class player that we do have and Brennan Johnson I think has been um, you know progressing through the season and showing us some good things so that's the front three I want to see and if we do play that front three with maybe a Kulisevsky in behind I think that's more than enough to hurt your back line and I think we can get goals but problem is keeping them out the other end because we need our six to start performing and Hoybier came in against Arsenal for some reason I don't know was terrible Bissouma has been terrible uh, for the last couple of weeks so I don't know which way we're going to go with the number six hopefully it's Bissouma well we have to capitalize we have to capitalize but will we <laughs> we'll find out we'll find out but big up to everybody that's locked in it's been yet another brilliant preview. Shout out to We Are Tottenham TV. Link is in the title. Link is in the description. We will be back on Thursday for the live watch along or cope along. Depends on what I title it. But big up to everybody. Like, subscribe. Up the Chelsea. Come on.